we have to, I mean, Hitler is such a horrible person to bring up because- Hitler Mussolini, you know. Yeah, Mussolini is better uh, because Hitler is so closely connected to the atrocities of the Holocaust. Right. There's all the stuff that led up to the war and the war itself, say that there was no uh, Holocaust. Hitler will probably be viewed differently. I should, yes, I should think so. Well, I mean, <laughs> but- <laughs> You think, that's a very controversial stance. You think Hitler would be viewed differently if it wasn't for the Holocaust? Well, <laughs> I mean, it would, but it's a funny thing that the, the 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 I would say the death of how many 40, 50 million, I mean, I don't know how you calculate it as is not seen as as bad as the six million. Oh yeah, because of Mao and, and Stalin. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's but it's interesting. Uh I'm working on it. You're working on yeah the next book I'm talking reminding, about. Reminding well, it's good. Um, I'm I'm glad a good writer is because well, the no, world's one not of, reminded. My last that. book, the new write, you know, I had to deal with some like the Nazis. And one of the points they make is how come everyone knows about the Holocaust, but no one knows about the Holodomor? And they're right. We should know about this because it is a great example of both how the Western media were depraved, but also what human beings are capable of. Uh, and those scars are still you know, many Americans think Russia and Ukraine are the same thing. You know, that like, oh, Trump's in bed with the Ukrainians, Trump's about the Russians, they think it's the same thing. It's, yeah. it's, for us, it's, it's complete lunacy. Um, but this is the kind of thing where Pol Pot is another example, uh, where people have no clue of what has been done to their fellow man on the face of this earth, and they should know. How much of that do you lay at the hands of communism? How much are you with like a, a Jordan Pearson who has is intricately connecting the atrocities like like you're saying, 1930s Ukraine, where people were starved. Um, I recently, so my grandmother recently passed away, and she, she looked, she survived that as a oh as a kid, which is, uh, it's fat. Th those people, I mean, just they're tough. They're tough. Like that whole region is tough because they survived that, and then right after <laughs> the Nazis, occupation yeah. of Nazis, yeah, yeah of Germans. Um, how much do you lay that? at communism as an ideology versus um, Stalin, the man? Uh, I think, you know, Lenin was building concentration camps, you know, while he was around and slave labor. Um, I, I don't, I think it's clearly both. There are certain variants of communism that were far like Khrushchev, you know, and, and Gorbachev. Uh, the reason the Soviet Union fell apart, and this is kind of, I'm gonna spoil the end of the book. There's an amazing book called Revolution 1989. It's like the most beautiful book I've ever read by Viktor Sebastian. He's a Hungarian author. And basically what happens in 1989, Poland has their elections. And, and then in 1990, they kind of let in the labor people into the government. And people start co crossing borders, you know, in the Eastern Bloc. And you had Honecker from Eastern Germany and uh, Ceausescu from Romania calling Gorbachev because those are the two toughest ones to, by communist standards. They go, they're, they're just escaping. We're gonna, we're gonna lose everything. You gotta send in the tanks like you did in Hungary, like you did in Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia in 68. And Gorbachev goes, I'm not sending the tanks. And they go, dude, if you don't send in the tanks, we're, we're, it's all done. And he goes, nope, I'm not that kind of guy. And they were right. I mean, they, uh, Ceausescu was personally shot with his wife up against the wall. Honecker, I forget what happened to him, but it, they all self-liberated. My friend who was born in Czech, uh, Czechoslovakia, his mom was pregnant you know, under communism and she never even imagined he'd be free and he was born under free. Uh, and they were all looking around all these countries that self-liberated because they're like, this is a trick, right? They're just, they're trying to figure out who's like not good so that they can arrest us en masse and they didn't. So uh, there, uh, even within communism, there are bad guys and better guys. But we talked about anarchy, we talked about democracy. Do you see like there's democratic socialism conversations going on in the, the popular culture, socialism is seen as like evil or for some people, great. Sure. What, like, what are your thoughts about it as in a political ideology? Evil. evil. So you're on the evil side, yes. fundamentally. Yes. What, what, what is it, you know, what, yeah, what, what makes it evil? What's like structurally, if you were to try to analyze what- like Sure, there's, I say three ways. Morally, no person has the right to tell another person how to live their life. Um, economically, it's not possible to make calculations under socialism. It's only the price, the prices that are information that tells me, oh, this is, we need to produce more of this, we need to produce less of this, without prices being able to adjust and give information to producers and, and, and uh, consumers, you have no way of being able to produce uh, effectively or efficiently. 
And also it is, uh, it turns people against each other. When you force people to interact, when you force them into relationships, when you force them into jobs, um, and you don't give them any choice when there's a monopoly, uh, the consequence of monopoly, everyone's familiar with in, ostensibly under capitalism, but somehow when it's a government monopoly, all those economic principles don't work, doesn't make any sense. But there's force in democracy too. It's just, you're, you're saying there's a, there's a bit more force in, uh, in socialism. Yeah. But that's interesting that you say that there's not enough information. I mean, that's ultimately, you need to have really good data yes. to achieve the goals of the system. Even even if there's no corruption. Right. You just need to have the information. Right, which you can't. And capitalism provides you um, like really strong- Real time. Real time information that, um, and if like capitalism at its best and cleanest, which is like perfect information is available. There's no manipulation of information. That's one, you know, that's one of the problems, okay.